Welcome to the update video. It is day 63, I think. If it's not, I will correct that in the title and description of this video. Um, and you can tell my voice sounds a little bit different. Also, I am sitting on a bed with all of my wonderful meds, which I am going to talk about in this update. So, a uh, quick rundown uh, of things that's happened. It's now been over two months on testosterone, and the first night I came home, I came out to my brother. Um, click on that video to learn about what that experience was like, to tell him that his sister is not going to be his sister much longer. Um, I have also come out to two of my high school friends, my general practitioner, my gynecologist, and my dermatologist. So I have been coming out to a lot of people this break. As for the changes, my voice has been cracking a lot. I cannot sing as high as I used to. My voice sounds like I'm sick. It's still very low. I still, over the phone, convey female. I think that's definitely what people have gotten. It now has a resoundingness to it that I really like. It is starting to sound very masculine. I love it. But it does crack a lot. My acne has gotten a lot worse. It is just as bad as I feared it would be because it seems to run on my, the men's side of my family, on the Japanese side, that bad acne is just a thing that happens. Um, I am glad that the resolution of this camera is not very good because I have painful cystic acne everywhere. It is quite sore. It is all down the backs of my shoulders. Um, testosterone causes your uh, sebum glands, your oil glands that are in your pores to produce more oil. That oil is sticky. Dead skin cells stick to that, clogs your pores, causes acne. My skin is acne prone genetically. It is prone to also creating cystic acne, which is great. Love that. Um, and it looks up close. It looks like my pores are just huge because they are getting clogged so much and it looks like almost every single one of my pores has a blackhead in it to me. It looks like I really don't like it. It started to spread um, down over my chest, as far down as almost to my belly button. It is uh, down my arms. I'm starting to get zits on my forearm here, which is... <laughs> You know, great. It's not on my other forearm. I don't know why, just one is breaking out. Um, it's gone down. Um, I've always had acne on my shoulders and my top of my chest, but it's gone down further down my back, um, and it's also on my butt and upper thighs, which I've had it on my upper thighs, little pimples, but now it's quite worse. Um, so I immediately saw my, my dermatologist, hence why I came out to my dermatologist. He gave me a prescription for Duac. It's a benzoyl peroxide cream to put on my body at night. Watch out, benzoyl peroxide bleaches things. So that is part of my ritual now. Hit that. Boom, right there. Um, had to go talk to my general practitioner to get caught up with a refill and with my meds for depression. Um, and so I updated her. I was like, hello, I have news for you. I'm trans. And are you, uh, first thing I wanted to ask was, are you experienced with trans patients with maybe one day prescribing these? And she said, no, but I can ask the endocrinologist that I refer people to if any of them deal with trans people and tell me everything I need to know. Um, and I will work with you with that. And she's very supportive. God bless her. I have gotten these from my dermatologist as well, which is oral antibiotics for acne, uh, which I took those in high school, but there was a shortage of them and they ran out. I haven't taken them again in years. And then I've got the regular testosterone and needles and fun stuff. And I'm gonna be traveling over break. So I'm just gonna have one of the needle tips or I might just take one of these double packs. So there's, um, this is just a needle, and this is a needle and the syringe together. So I might just take one of these and some alcohol prep pads 
and the hormone with me, which I can fly with. And I might just shove them all into this tube so I don't lose them. If they fit, if they don't fit, I can put them in something. Oh, they might fit. Uh, something else. Get my next injection next week on Thursday, July, I think, 3rd or 4th. That I can just take what I need with me, fly, inject, not have to worry about it for another few weeks. Also, um, a little bit of facial hair has started to grow. Now you can't see it in this camera, but if you were to if you were to rub your hand, and I've shaved twice now, um, it's I don't have much to shave, but I am shaving. It's just the tiniest little bit of hair here, and even less, but slightly more here. Oh, also I've noticed. Um, just the slightest bit when I just noticed the little bit of hair growing right here. When I was showering off and I was drying off, I was looking down at my legs and it, I thought it was just the trick of the light, but I think it's, I think my leg hair is darkening just a little bit on my thighs. Well, at least for a few years I've had leg hair. I haven't noticed any change in that, but I've noticed around my groin and around the tufts of my thighs, the hair is starting to darken just a little bit. It almost looks like I, it almost looks like there's just a hairs like twisted together, and that's why they look darker. Is they're just like two that have just kind of stuck together. And I touch them, and sure enough, I think that they're getting a little bit, a little bit thicker. I came out to my gynecologist before my weekly annual, and I talked to her about getting um, Nexplanon, which will be going in my arm after I get back from my trip to Hawaii to see my grandparents with my family. And um, the reason I'm getting Nexplanon is because it is not a thing I have to take every day, which is a plus, but also taking birth control is a little bit dysphoric for me because every day I have to remember that I have a uterus, that I'm taking like female drugs, I don't like doing it, it's dysphoric. That's what I, the, that's the short of it. And also, Nexplanon is progesterone only, it does not contain estrogen, and that helps to not interfere with the hormone I am injecting into myself and any balance that I'm doing with that. Also, it is long lasting, however, it does not uh, protect against STDs. Only condoms do that, and not having sex. So yeah, came out to a lot of people, most importantly my brother, I'll be going over that in another video. I've got this mountain of meds, which I'm going to absolutely do my best to stay on top of. It's been very hard to keep scheduling doctor's visits around my uh, schedule for college and being home. I really, oh, I really wish that I lived closer to home so I could get through this better. The plans for future are in the uh, end of January, I will have my next uh, blood work. Um, it came out that I got a bill from my insurance. It covers, um, blood work would normally be about $350, and it covers about 250 of that, so it's about 130 or so dollars that they're not covering. And my parents, God bless them, have said that they will cover half of that, which is lovely of them. So they will help me with my next blood work. I will still be paying for my other meds. Um, so paid for my dermatology meds. The birth control is free under my insurance, which is how it should be. After that blood test, they'll check the levels, the levels of testosterone and estrogen in my blood and see if it's good and see most importantly how I feel about it, if I'm having a good time with it, which I am, and that I'm in no danger mentally, physically, socially, environmentally. And the next dose we would go up to is 0.5 ml, which is double my 0.25 ml. That would still be every two weeks. However, if I wanted to, I could break it up and every week do half of that 0.25 ml. However, that's a lot of the really thick needle and my thighs would be very sore. For my last injection for week number five, I did it in my left thigh and it actually bled. I've never had one bleed before. It's, it's been, the last four have been in my right thigh. But this one bled a little bit and there's a little, um, I barely bruised, but I did bruise for this and it's a little green dot it almost looks like um it's been there for a week now a little over a week hopefully that bruise goes away i'm not worried about getting, coming infected it's not an open wound but that's surprising because i rarely ever bruise like foreseeably ideally would be moving up to in february 0.5 ml and my voice will keep dropping i will keep growing hair hopefully my acne will get better because i am taking these oral antibiotics and having this gel hopefully my uh future birth control which i'll do a video on that how that experience is will help regulate hormones and I will be watching very carefully for side effects uh, with blood clots, with irregular bleeding, uh, with chest tightness, with anything that could endanger me as you should normally when you get a birth control, a start 
anything that uh, messes with your hormones, with any new medication, watching out for things you could be allergic to. Though I have taken oral birth control for years, I believe my body will take this birth control just fine. Um, changes in mood is what I'm most concerned about. I would rather have horrible acne and not be depressed than have clear skin and feel like garbage all the time because of the meds I'm taking. I am very happy with how well, how productive I've been over winter break. I I think I might be able to film my fifth in, uh, sixth injection. If you want to see that, let me know. It's pretty much the same as the other injection video. Uh, I'll just be in a different location. Um, and I'll probably be filming it just on my laptop because I won't be able to bring a camera with me. Um, or I could use my phone if I could hook it up. Yeah, have a wonderful new year. Hopefully this video gets posted before the new year. Um, I'll see you all on the other side in 2019. Bye!